So I'm about ready for my afternoon cup of coffee and what I've decided to use today and show off to you is the Hario V60. This is the glass version. Um, give it a little tap there, you can tell. Uh, obviously, first right off the bat, it's a pretty elegant design. And it's actually one of my preferred ways to brew coffee these days, not just because all the hipsters are doing it, but uh, because it really does make a great tasting cup of coffee, particularly one that isn't too bitter. Um, and I don't really know why that is. It could be the grooves, it could be, you know, the glass material itself. Um, it could just be that I see it used everywhere and think for that reason that it's better brewer. Um, but I've done a few simple blind taste tests with people like my girlfriend, my friends, some family members, and um, when compared to something like the AeroPress, this has outperformed it. Uh, they have tended to prefer the Hario. So, um, quick pros and cons here. Uh, starting with the pros, obviously aesthetics, great taste in coffee with less bareness. Um, great for a quick and easy one cup of coffee. Uh, cons, I, I guess you can say the one hole is a potential con. I know people have said that that makes the coffee extract more quickly. Uh, in other words, the, the hot water flows through the coffee more quickly with a big hole like this. Um, I know that some of the manual drippers that places in Japan tend to use, and this is just what I've heard from um, the folks at Blue Bottle, is that they use a three-hole dripper um, and they're smaller holes at the bottom. So that's something you might want to test out and I'm probably going to do in the future. I do have a three-hole dripper uh, that isn't by Hario. Um, and then another con, I guess, which is also a pro, is the material. The glass is fragile. Um, if you drop this, it would probably be game over. Uh, so you do want to be very careful with it uh, when using and cleaning it, and even storing it. Um, I've had some near disasters taking it out of the cabinet. So I'm going to go weigh out some coffee, grind it up, and just walk you through how I brew with the Hario V60. Okay, so coffee has been ground. I actually used a Hario hand mill grinder. And uh, this is about 20 grams. You can see that there's a, kind of a one cup, two cup indicator on this thing. So that's just about over the one cup mark. Uh, if you don't want to use a scale when you have your coffee, uh, that's a good little guideline if you decide to use this hand grinder. Um, anyway, back to the task at hand. Uh, here is our filter. Uh, the Hario actually uses its, its own filters. Uh, these are number twos, I believe. Um, and you can see that even after I fold this perforated edge that you're supposed to do and put it into the filter, it's kind of popping out. So what I always do is put it on top of my glass or mug, and then I grab my kettle. And I'm using 200 degree water. That is a um, this is the variable temperature of Bonavita kennel. And I'm just gonna slowly pre-wet the filter. And you can see, well, this accomplishes two things, at least for this brewer, and I spilled some on the table. Um, for one, it, it makes sure that the filter um, goes down and fits in place as it should. And the other thing it does is it gets that papery taste out of the dry paper filter. Um, so this is one of the reasons people don't like to use paper filters and stick to kind of those um, gold uh, tone mesh filters um, for taste reasons. But pre-wetting the filter should get rid of that papery taste. And then actually a third thing it does is, I mean, if you use enough hot water it preheats your glass or mug. So that's always good. So I'm going to load up the coffee and get to brewing. 
So a few things have changed on our setup here. Um, I've added a scale and you can see since I've added the coffee into the filter 21 grams should be around 20. Um, that's actually weighed out into the grinder but um, one gram isn't gonna make too much of a difference here. So I'm gonna zero that in. Um, some people like to make a little divot in the middle of the ground coffee. Uh, I don't really find it 100% necessary, but you're free to do that if you want. Um, and our temperature should be around 200, uh, ideally between 195 and 205 Fahrenheit. So what I'm going to do is just pour into the middle very slowly, and I'm going to aim for about 40 grams of water here, double the weight of the coffee, and just make a slow circular motion to wet all of the coffee. It's around 36, and what's cool about this um, is you can set a little timer here. So I'm going to let that go for about 30 seconds to a minute, and you want to practice and try and get as little coffee dripping through as you can during this blooming phase. Obviously, I still have a lot of uh, practicing to do, but um, as long as there isn't too much flow during the bloom phase, you're doing something right. So you can see that the gases, the CO2 is really escaping. The coffee is blooming. So once we're around 30 seconds to a minute, which we are, some people do it for 30 seconds and some do it for a minute. So I just decided to find a middle ground. So what I do is just pour out about 15 grams at a time. And I do that same kind of outward circular motion. And I do that about every 15 seconds, just for consistency. And so you're not kind of speeding up the flow of the coffee. And you can see it's starting to come out more quickly, which is to be expected, but you don't want to let it get too quick. So we're going to keep doing this process, and I know it's a little bit, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Cumbersome, tedious. Um, so you're free to play around with this. You don't have to do it to the T like I'm doing it. Well, I'm running out of room on my camera here, but I just want to say one final thing. Uh, it should take about three and a half minutes to do this whole thing, so we're almost there. And you should get to about 300 grams of water, between 200 and 300 grams, depending on how strong you want your coffee. All right, see you at the final cup. I have my final cup of coffee here. Once again, it should come out to around 200 to 300 grams in your final cup, uh, depending on what kind of ratio you want to use. I recommend uh, two to one, or sorry, um, a 10 to one, which would be 200 grams if we're using 20 grams of coffee. Um, if you want a stronger cup, and if you want something on the lighter side uh, to work your way down or up from, I would go with the three, or sorry, the 15 to one, uh, which was 300 grams in your final cup. Uh, and this smells great and tastes great. So thanks for watching and please like, comment, share, whatever, ask your questions. Thanks.